Hey everyone, this is Brittany Bond and my godfather. Richard oh. Evanson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. We are currently sitting in his house, him and my godmother Heather's house in Grenoble, France. Yeah. Yep. Did I say yep. that right? Perfect. <laughs> so I have been on a tour around Europe. Um and I decided to have this be my last stop. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Thank and you. We're so happy to have you here. Aww. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too. I, I I get a lot of my friends asking like, who are these people that are like basically your parents? Like I have a group chat, a family, we call it a family <laughs> chat on WhatsApp together. I Everything that's going on in my life, you guys know about. And I think a lot of people are interested how we got to be this way. I always explain it as like chosen family because my family has chosen to be separate from my life and that's okay. But for a long time I was like, if, if I, I want, I want more, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> I would love to have more people in my life that I, I can't, cause I have so much love and care that I want to give. You can have everything. I can have everything <laughs> I want. So chosen family is what I decided I was going to have. And you guys are definitely parents for me and I'm look like, really grateful, but I want to hear it from your side. Like, how is it for you or how, how did, how did we get to be in each other's <laughs> lives? Tell me the story. Well, we, we, both think you're amazing and so when we met you we just fell in love with you and of course <laughs> wanted to adopt you and take you under yes. our wing and have you in our life and do whatever we could to support you because you're an amazing person have great energy or mm. you know your values are fantastic you're doing so much in the world and anything we can do to help you we're there and and, and we're honored really mm, we're honored thank you that really like i was mm. i was telling you earlier that when I was meditating this morning, it's my last full day. Oh, Faraday's calling. Uh, I'll call him back. Hold on. Wait, it'd be funny to put him on the podcast. <laughs> He'll love this. <laughs> hey, Faraday. Hey, Faraday. How are you? Hey, great. <laughs> I'm recording a podcast right now. You? Now now you're on my podcast. Say hi to everyone. Oh. Hello, hello. Welcome to Britney's, I think, first official episode. <laughs> now you're famous. And you have a technical question, I guess? I did. It was, the SD card was not reading, but now it's reading, and I'll call you later because I don't know what's going on. But the universe said, yes, now we're going to do it. And then I even had this vision of you calling in the middle of the podcast, and that happened. Here we go. And is it, is it recording that the number is going up the seconds? Yes. The minutes? Yes. Oh, yeah. And Thank oh, you. Yeah. I, headphones in and hear it? Yes. And the sound and is so working. good. Everything's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> enjoy this Britney podcast and I cannot wait to listen to it as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love you. Bye. <laughs> okay. Faraday's amazing. So back to the podcast. Um, I, in order for me to do everything that I feel the universe is dreaming through me, I know that I've always wanted, you know, I can do it alone. We all can do whatever we want, mm -hmm. right? But for me, it it matters. Like if it, it's like I've gotten to the point where not, we know that nothing actually matters. So then we can choose that everything matters. Exactly. And I've always chosen joy. And then I've always chosen love. I'm like, I, I want to have this huge chosen family yeah. so yeah. many of my friends though are asking how d like literally how does that happen because i think for most people they don't like how do we explain to people how to be mm. able to have their own chosen family because i know a lot of my friends would love to have people in their life that are as cool as you guys you know you you and i did mushrooms yesterday <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh. did we okay can you tell them about that that Holy was great crap let's just tell yeah, them about the mushroom yeah. trip so i'm i'm thinking i'm micro dosing and Mm -hmm. And taking a small amount, and then boy, okay, that was a little <laughs> bit more than microdosing. I don't know if it was the the, the place, the person, the the timing, or what. But it was everything. Yeah, yeah, that was that was intense. <laughs> everything, everywhere, all at yeah, once. Every we could just kept looking at each other and just being like, "Yep, mm -hmm, yep, yep," yep. <laughs> and just kind of going round and round <laughs> through multiple lifetimes and every single emotion and. <laughs> Time went forward and then it went back. I love I'm it. like, what the heck? Hey, <laughs> no, I looked at my watch. I It was 5 freaking p.m. <laughs> and then I looked at my watch again and it was three. And I'm like, mm, 
okay, something happened here. <laughs> but I love that we had that shared experience without talking to each We talked about it afterwards that we really felt that it had been multiple lifetimes lived in that session. Oh, yeah. And from the time that we took it to when we actually, you know, probably came back fully in our bodies, it was three hours. And normally mushroom trips even last longer than that. But I feel like we just... Oh, I'm, I'm glad it was only that. <laughs> it, it lasted a lot longer than three hours. I mean, we, we, yeah. we, we reversed the clocks there at some in, point. In so. this 3D reality, it was yeah. three hours. But yeah. we decided okay. it was a mutual agreement that yeah. in other realities... Yeah. We, 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 we passed a few more hours there somehow. <laughs> Uh, but that it was I, I really believe it was our energies, you know, higher vibration, like really heart open combining that made that experience. And then I felt so safe as well. I was like, it's yeah. so beautiful. We're in the ma- we were like in the mountains in France. Oh, the, all the trees were co- changing colors. Like, wow, it's so, some so of the beautiful. Best scenery you can have in the world. <laughs> it was it's like, just although, breathtaking. I think it was mostly yellow, the yellow. Yeah, we don't get the reds here like in New England. It's mainly when it changes, you get these Oof. bright yellows everywhere. So beautiful. With the greens yeah, and I was blue sending. Skies I was sending all these messages to all my friends um, when I was sitting there on the mountain towards the end of the trip, and I was just, mm-hmm. I was just crying at one point. I'm like, <laughs> I love you guys so much, and I was talking to one of my friends about like this term that I thought of recently of called grounded joy, because mm-hmm. a lot of people, I, you and I talk about this, like, yeah, we just we emanate this you know, outward joy to people. And I think some people think that that means that we are not all the way there or maybe not as aware as we should be. I think that some of this is like the fear mindset. And I'm like, no, this is grounded joy. I, yeah. I understand what's going on out there and I choose to have, yeah. but you're the same. So well, it's, it's all choice. We, that we have free choice, you know, chosen family is about choice. How we feel is choice, you know, so you make a choice and then you create that reality. I mean, it's simple to say, but it's it's harder because we've got these, you know, kind of narratives in the back of our head that are making different choices. And so which one of these things that we're thinking are we actually choosing and manifesting? Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. And the guide that I feel that you and I follow a lot is just follow our joy like whatever is mm-hmm. exciting us in that now moment yeah. Just, which is about everything honestly yeah, honestly <laughs> i oh. i must have been a lab in the last, last like <laughs> oh, that's great that's great oh i like this let me go over here oh i want to see this oh this is cool you're a nice person yeah, yeah. pretty well yeah. like when we get home from whatever we're doing we just update each other on the dogs that we met when we were out and the yeah. little kids that we were smiling no, at. the babies love the babies oh yeah, yeah. yesterday when we were on <laughs> mushrooms i remember we were talking about whenever in the world i this timeline i have children I'm like, it's mandatory that you were there for the early Ooh, years. Fun, fun, fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Give me babies. I'm happy. So Have them crawl all over me. I <laughs> want to talk about you having this awakeness uh, when, like, there's this term that my friend Jasmine uses all the time, and, and she read it in a book about third wave. And mm-hmm. it's basically that there's this first wave of people that wake up. And then they kind of set the tone for my generation, which is Mm -hmm. the second wave to come in and start manifesting in the 3D what a lot of you guys have already envisioned or downloaded, you know, like you kind of knew that this was how the world should be a better version of what we could do now. And then we're out here like kind of creating these things. And then there's going to be third wave of children who are raised in that, you know, they're raised Mm -hmm. in that bubble of everything's okay. (laughs) But how did, how was it for you to, be first wave generation if we're going to use these terminologies well the way it feels to me is like there's big six foot waves smacking the crap out of you and you just kind of stand there and you take it and you just keep trying to be yourself and pretty soon the waves just stop smacking you because they figure you're a rock and you're here to stay and they get used to you and then it's not a big deal and so it's you know humanity just kind of adjust over time i mean you know look at how much we've adjusted to that we consider this is all normal life if you went back 100 years you know people and pulled somebody forward they'd be shocked that this is normal oh my god this is crazy so it's just, it's, you know, the first wave kind of introduces, 
just the the concepts, the different ways of thinking. We're a little bit out there, a little bit crazy. You know, we get rejected, we get beat up. We don't care. You know, we kind of live our lives. We're enjoying ourselves. And then the second wave comes along and somebody goes, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. OK, maybe that's not too crazy after all. And and then it gets a little more accepted. And then by there's a tipping point. And that's with humanity. It's always about tipping points, getting things to a tipping point. Once it gets to the tipping point, then you kind of got gravity on your side and it goes really easy after that. What would you say to all the kids today that are second wave and are waking up and we're really, really sensitive? You know, they're, they're coming into their bodies and they feel everything in the world, like me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like how I was trying to explain to you that I can feel the vibrations yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, th- I think this is the first time you really understood that about me because, you know. Yep. Yeah, I didn't realize that you embody everything around you and that your energetic body is quite spread out. I mean, it's, and so you pick up everything within a very large vicinity and feel it as if it were you, you know, because it is on some level because your energetic body is, is that far out. So yeah, that's a different experience. I don't have that. My energetic body is maybe a little bit more defined and closer in. So there's a lot of so. them like me. Well, I've yeah. been meeting them while I've been in Europe, especially all the ones that I went on the retreat with, with Faraday and his friends yeah. that are now my friends, yeah. my family. And th- a lot of them were having a very hard time because they're just so sensitive and their parents are like one of the girls I was talking to her about. I just she was having some issues with food and being able to eat and not just not having an appetite, you know, and I asked mm-hmm. her, do you feel safe in your body? And she just looked at me and she was like, no. And yeah. then the next day she came to me and she's like, I've been thinking about this. That my whole time, you know, her parents, everyone was making this huge thing. And it was just that she was feeling all the things. And everyone yeah. was telling her like, oh, why don't you just be normal? And maybe this is the new normal that we are just, we just feel things more. <laughs> well, it's safe in your body means safe in your environment. And even when we were going around the city here, you were struggling because you were picking up a lot of things in the environment, not even close to you, that felt threatening to you in a way. And so I think... You Wait, know, let's talk about that thing. Oh, that was nutty. That was, yeah. Because I, I, I think we were even... T- <laughs> like, whenever I go to a new place, I just ask the universe, okay, show me the vibe of this place to see whether it's a place I want to live or not. Mm-hmm. So you and I went bicycling around the main town of Grenoble. It's like this old city type of place. It's really beautiful. And I just was kind of asking... I was like smiling at everyone and, you know, just doing my normal thing while I was just talking to people. And I could see that people were like first surprised and then a lot of times they would smile back but it would Mm -hmm. be like very delayed you know like oh oh we can do this and i'm like yes it's okay we can smile at each other and then we went to go get you tell the rest of this oh okay well we went out for some coffee and and sweets (laughs) and um one of the places that has some of the really nice sweets and they were really good yeah and beautiful weather and we got some coffee and and some sweets and sat out at a table um and it was interesting because where i wanted to sit was kind of in the path of the microburst (laughs) we'll call it that that came through there and you're like no no i want to sit over there which actually was a good choice because otherwise i just realized that we wanted to sit down somewhere and i said no no i want to sit over here you consciously moved us a little further away from the path of uh things that came through there and then yeah we were sitting there talking and i think we were just talking about the city and like how things are there and and then like literally out of the corner of my eye on my left side someone just barrels through all of the tables like Mm -hmm. this two guys fighting and punching each other Mm -hmm. really hard i didn't even know what to do because i haven't seen that kind of violence in like three years at least even no i haven't either i mean it's it's not normal for me (laughs) and i'm like like, nope i wouldn't live here (laughs) yeah Mm -mm, yeah mm -mm." yeah. and i I, I think just my living on Copanyang for so long has made it so that my nervous system is so safe. I feel so safe mm-hmm. that I was normally in those type of situations. I have like, you know, a survival mode. I get up, mm-hmm. I do things, whatever. I just kind of was in shock. I'm like, okay, this is weird. And, but then you were, what were you saying? You're like, oh, your energy, Brittany, is activating. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm like, it, there's some interesting things that seem to happen when you're here. And I'm like, I can't quite figure out. Are you, you know, feeling kind of uncomfortable and that unco- discomfort kind of gets projected out? So not only are you picking up from the environment, but maybe reflecting back to a certain degree and people are picking up on that. I don't know. Things are happening. <laughs> Things are happening. It was very different. I was, I've been here for a few years and a lot of situations that I've never seen anything that violent. Oh, I so, want to tell people about, yeah. so anyways, that was <laughs> just the crazy thing that happened. No. I want to tell people about you and how you, um, I don't know if a lot of people have heard of the term fire, you know, fi- uh, financial okay. independent retire early. Yep. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your lifestyle? Cause I think for some people it's really inspiring. Uh, simple, basically. If you want to achieve fire, you know, and, and it's basically that you retire early. You have a financial you, plan. You have enough money to retire early, and there's different types of fire. You know, there's kind of you know this light fire or fat fire. You know, and just depending on how much you have and how far you can go. Uh, for folks that come from a country where they're they've been paying into Social Security and Social Security is an option. You know, you can also kind of have enough money to get you to Social Security age and then have a low cost of living that allows you to comfortably uh, live on Social Security. But the key, honestly, it's for me, it's always it's a numerator and denominator. The numerator is how much you earn. Denominator is how much you spend. You want that ratio to be as large as possible. So earning, you know, two or three X what your living costs are allow you to basically save you know, several years for every year you work. When you start to get to 10x uh, earnings to living cost, then you get into this rapid, you know, development of fire. And so I went from nothing to being able to retire within five years, largely because I maximized my earnings during that period and significantly reduced uh, living cost. And now you guys have a house here in Grenoble or several yeah. and one in the Netherlands yeah. and one in one Sweden in Sweden as and well that one's an income now I'm like also definitely. come to Copenhagen and, and buy one yeah. in Copenhagen uh, open for other <laughs> possibilities of income properties it's, we're I already struggling th- between two homes <laughs> already and <in> travel <laughs> okay but you're doing great because most people you know we know we you are amazing and it's goals I I feel like it's just really important for people to know like how much you have impacted my life in a very positive way from a business standpoint you're always there for me you give me such good advice you and heather are always like on the call like ready to go and also on a personal standpoint you know i've gone through a lot of uh interesting experiences that i have chosen for my timeline to learn Mm -hmm. certain things and you guys are always there to laugh and cry with me through all of it and I feel that I, you have my back in a way that um, it's the first time I've ever felt that with family. And yeah, I'm just so grateful for it. And I feel like I want to f- put this out to the universe so that other people can be inspired, that they can have that kind of connections with people. Absolutely. And and, and basically don't settle for less. Uh, the universe hates a vacuum, basically. <laughs> this is This is how I got this very high paying job was I refused to take anything that did not meet my seven point criteria. And it wasn't just about money, but being able to kind of work remotely and live in a different country and be able to feel comfortable that I was accepted and valued just as I was, um, that there was a lot of flexibility and freedom. um, And I had a lot of job offers. I was able to create the abundance. And I said, nope, that's not good enough. And so, and the universe kept trying to fill that hole. And then finally, it was like, okay, fine, here you go. And it hit all seven points. And with relationships, it's absolutely the same. Don't settle for less. And friendships, uh, same thing. You know, you you hold. But can we say that in the positive instead of don't settle? Like, what do you mean? Have key but, criteria. Like that believe in yourself. You, yeah, it's it's. But it's, what about the whole thing about not getting stuck on the outcome? Aren't we supposed to follow our highest excitement and then just like let it go because it could get even better than that? Well, I mean, the outcome is saying I'm going to marry Brad Pitt. You know that <laughs> don't get stuck on that, but you know have clear criteria of what you want and you know 
a partner and a friend and a job and an so like what qualities and how will Absolutely. it feel and and envision it and and, and you get know. really excited about it in your body like yep. yeah absolutely and just say i'm gonna find this i'm and i you know and, and you wander around and you follow your muse and you listen to people it's it's like this treasure hunt in yeah. a way yeah i always view life as like an adventure it is it is it's like a game okay like and then we're on this timeline okay let's play this game and then it's like jump so do you believe in like all i want to talk about spiritual stuff with you because yesterday when we were this wasn't spiritual i mean everything's <laughs> spiritual whatever <laughs> yesterday we were talking about how that was you feel like that's going to be the last time you take mushrooms oh yeah that it, it was a clear message for me as as soon as i dropped dead it was you know just all kind of um basically aztec geometry sacred geometry which was like oh that's interesting i'm here in the alps and i'm seeing all kind of Aztec sacred geometry and the entire history of the new world. Okay. Ooh, that's talk about intense stuff. And then it was mom kind of coming up going, do not come this way again. Hmm. I'm like, okay, I got it. I got it. And it just kept going around and around. And every time it was like, yep, we're going to keep you going around until you say you never want to do this again. I'm like, okay. But you but say that me. you already see like the auras of flowers and like tell me the kind of stuff i want to hear again yeah, part of it is just if you if you believe you can see it, it's it's almost like you have to take the blinders off because we can all see we can all tune in to you know you can I, I i like to live life like a bee at times and i'll get into the flowers and i can see the uv light and the glowing <laughs> inner part of flowers it is intense it is sexy it is <laughs> i i, I want to shrink myself down and fly right in the middle of it i get where the bees are coming from it is so cool um you know so it's you, you can do these things you just kind of it, it takes just focusing in believing and just doing it i i love it yesterday you gave me some really good advice about boys men <laughs> i think it's good for yeah, people too. please men at this point yeah it's, men you, you, yeah. But, if you want to have kids you can have boys but <laughs> well, what, i wanted to i want to put this in the recording so i hear it again oh, okay um what were you telling me like to focus on I was saying focus on the flow and you were saying oh that to that if cuz I was saying I want to I would love to partner with someone whose their core emotion is also joy cuz that's mine and I'm like yeah. always looking for the bright side of everything like following my highest excitement getting so excited about everything and I I was you were saying okay you can tell if someone's following their joy if oh they're always looking for opportunities right Tell me more. Yeah. Again, it's, it's, you're either, it's two sides of the coin. You're either seeing the negative or you're seeing the positive. If people come into a situation and they're seeing the positive, they're seeing the opportunities, they're seeing the upside, you know, then that's kind of, you're operating from joy, faith, belief, and, and it's much easier to manifest, you know, so it's. But did you always trust the universe this month? Oh, no, no, no. I got the shit kicked out of me. <laughs> I so went how 20 years of brutal marriages and court battles and everything else that, uh, you know, if you want to talk testing faith, oh, boy. So how did you get to a point where you, you are this joyful? I, I was this way beforehand. And I think actually being a nomad made it easier because being a nomad, and when I'm a nomad, I'm in flow state. It throw me into a new place where I don't know, you know, what to expect or how to do things. And I naturally go into a flow state and I, and I connect with the energies and how things work and connecting with people. And it's, it's magical in a way. And so for me, it's, you know, that's why I love to travel because it, it, it allows me to kind of reconnect with all of that stuff that sometimes when you get stay in one place for too long and the local culture and values kind of get on top of you and you find yourself limiting yourself again. And so breaking out of that um, into a totally new place where all those values in one place to look at you like, eh, no, no, that's not the way life is. And you go, oh, yeah, that's right. Life can be whatever I choose. So how did you get to a point where you realize that you create your reality? Ooh, did you always know that? Um, hmm, good question. I kind of went through life 
rather clueless and I just kind of, <laughs> uh, I just, well, it's, you know, and I just, I, I, the way I would describe it is I followed the, the light posts. So like, you know, I'm traveling around and I'm like, Oh, I, I, it seems more light in that direction. So I'll go over there. And then I get there and I'm like, Oh, it feels like I need to go this way. And so I just keep, you know, wandering and stuff would happen and I'd be open to it. And, you know, and it was kind of cool and magical. And until I took one turn, you know, the left at Albuquerque and suddenly, you know, got out of flow and then nothing worked. Uh, and that's where suddenly I had to think about it and try to figure it out. And, um, but before that it was just kind of instinctual. So you definitely a first wave. It did, was it easy for you to follow the flow? When you were doing it instinctually? Um, good question. I, I would say yes, just because it felt good. I mean, you're you're plugging into energy flow, so you're feeling this energy and this vibration. And so it's, you know, it's is, 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 is it easy if, there, if somebody's got a path of candy and you're just eating one piece after the next? Yeah, yeah that's kind of what it felt like. Um, you know, when I got out of it, trying to find my way back, that was tough. That was, that was where I had to give up a lot of expectations of what I thought, you know, life should be and, and who I should be and what I should do. Um, well, I want to talk about Copanyong. So I'm okay. always talking about it with you. Because you love it. Because <laughs> I love it so much, and it feels like home. And we met before I w- like we known each other for oh, years yeah. before yeah, I would ever Chiang Mai. before I ever got to Koh Phangan. And did you see a difference in me since huge. I huge? Oh my god! Tell, can you've, you tell people about that? Wow! Oof! You've you've come into your confidence. You've come into yourself, your energetic body. Um, your sexuality, your sensuality, your awareness, um, so much has shifted. It's, it's, it's been a beautiful, you know, Aww. transition. So I'm, I'm very Thank proud you. of you. I'm amazed. It's, you know, very few people can accomplish that, let alone do so under, you've had a lot of challenges over the last number of years <laughs> that should have shut most people down I'm and so you, stubborn yeah you're like the phoenix rising out from the ashes every all time my, all my scorpio now i've gone to the point where this we were talking about this a lot this week about staying in the flow and allowing ourselves to speak up for what we need because mm-hmm. i think both of us were raised in an environment where we had to go along with what was happening or burn it all to the ground and like start over and now mm-hmm. I'm, I feel a lot more grounded and balanced in my energy where I'm like, I'm just going to speak up for my needs. And then whatever needs to happen after that is maybe this is what the universe wants me to do right now. Yeah. And that feels really good and more grounded. And I feel like that's when I start feeling like things are a game. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm safe. And then everything beyond this is just, yeah. is playing. It's part of the treasure hunt. You know, yeah. you're going from store to store. Can you meet my needs? Nope. Okay. We'll go to the next store. Can you meet my needs? Nope. Okay, I'll go to the next store. Uh, well, I can't, but maybe this person can't. Ooh, okay, where's that person? Okay, <laughs> let me go over there. And you just, you know, bit by bit, you start connecting the dots until you get what you want. Yeah, and when I was, um, hold on one second. Let me. Okay, sorry, we were doing a mic check. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Copan Young, I feel that this is a place that the universe is dreaming through me to build a tribe of Mm -hmm. people of like these what do you want to call them alien (laughs) starseed third wave whatever whatever we are epic amazing weirdly wonderful souls of children i feel like it's like never never land and my goal and the dream that is being dreamed through me is to have the island be a prototype of how we could live in the world So access to organic fruits and vegetables, like doing regeneration on the island, permaculture, having amazing places to raise our kids, like, Mm -hmm. like, you know, feeling safe to raise children there and doing everything to take care of the sea. I don't know if I said that, but coral regeneration stuff. That's, that's one I'm super proud of Jasmine for getting that going. And I have so much, we have so much energy for it. And Mm -hmm. the first phase is to, um, gather in a resort on the beach and kind of just 
lay the stake in the ground and call call all the people. Mm-hmm. And so Feda and Jasmine and I have been putting this together and now it's kind of what you were saying about going shopping, figuring out, pick, picking the one that yeah. I want. The, it's like I have one in mind yeah. and I'm also allowing whatever the universe thinks is best to come through. And then the goal is to have after that, if it all you know flows in that direction in, in the timeline I'm seeing right now is that we have multiple of them on the island. Mm-hmm. And then we can also after this build hubs of this type of community around the world in certain locations like maybe well i would say it's already a done deal you've already seen it you've already realized it in the future and now you're kind of reverse engineering it into our time and going oh okay yeah this is already a done deal or how do i need to kind of chart my way there so yeah that's that's why i also feel so satisfied with it already i'm mm-hmm. like this it's is already co- done this it's is already great. accomplished yeah and there's nothing that- to stress about worry about <laughs> doubt just- what the, <laughs> how can you doubt something that's already done yeah i just it's something that feels so there and i think i've been training it feels like the accumulation of everything i've ever practiced in the past and different skill sets and different things they're all coming to fruition and the reason why it feels really good for me is it feels like my actual tribe that i want to be in mm-hmm and yeah. that's like, oh, that is everything. And I'm so excited for you guys to be there and to be part of it. Yeah, it'd be fun. I enjoy playing with all of your friends because yeah. everybody's very sweet. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so many people I'm excited to introduce you to when we go to Kofun Young. Yeah. So the plan, the current plan, everyone, is that he's coming out in December. And so you guys all get to meet him. But is there anything that you would want to tell like a lot of the people out there about creating their own reality or living their dream life? Because I know you and I really believe in it. I I think a lot of people already are. Just by being there, they've already kind of broken away from, you know, set patterns of how life must be, should be, et cetera, et cetera. And they've already gone, hey, life can be different and I want something different. And as long as you have a clear vision, of it and and then then it's a dance with the universe then it's like this is what i want and the universe will send you different partners you're like man it's not quite right and you just keep working until you go yeah hey that'll work hey wow this flows really well okay yep i'm on board (laughs) this sounds great i forgot to tell people like all these basic things about you you're from the states right can you tell people where you're born yeah Born and raised more or less in Florida, but my father was Norwegian, my mom was American, so I've been brought up somewhat biculturally, I guess. And how many languages do you speak again? Oh, at this point? A lot. Yeah, pretty comfortable, like fluent in six, another six I can get by, and then I've learned a bunch more. Basically 12 languages plus, like that's amazing. And can you, will you, are you comfortable telling people how old you are? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that that's kind of a confusing. <laughs> okay, in the, time, in and this time doesn't 3D, exist, but okay, where no, time no. does exist. Okay, I'm, but in this three D reality, how old you are, and then I'll 56. ask fifty six, and then how old do you actually feel? Ooh, geez, um, yeah, that uh, many different ages at once. I guess. I mean, <laughs> you know, some some days I'm you know one hundred and eighty, and some days I'm like eight months old. So mm-hmm. I kind of drift. Just. That's great. You can just try out all the different timelines. Yeah, one. just it, it helps me put myself into different spaces. Sometimes I need to be older, wiser, and look back. And sometimes I need to be young and energetic and have everything positive in front of me. So, yeah. So we were talking yesterday about being living in the now and like how you can have so many different timelines if we really are fully present. Mm-hmm. Can you help me explain that to people? Because it's something I embody a lot. And I sometimes would, like, how would you explain that? Ooh. Um, <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm just like, okay, I, I probably need about 10 books. Uh, and, you know, the, the, part of it is most of us don't live in the now. We're either living in the past and reliving the past, or we're focused on the future, which isn't here, and we're kind of caught up with all those kind of things, which may or may not come. And, you know, being now, just being present and being fully aware and connected with everything, uh, it's it takes a lot of effort. 
Um, but when you do, it's almost like you're now at that kind of point of intersection of time and space and dimensions. And so then once you're there, you can kind of move out in any direction. So which, this is how I feel is like, it's like it, it's like everything aligns energetically mm-hmm. and yep. then you have this like click, 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 almost like when you yep. take DMT, my experience, yeah. it's like, Gee! yeah, I would, you know, it's, what is it? The Star Trek, you know, uh, <laughs> beam me up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but then you I go feel, wherever you want at that but, point. So that is something that's like a very specific feeling that I felt where it's like everything's aligned. I can, mm-hmm. and then I have this kind of like moment where I'm like, yep. I can literally choose whichever timeline or reality that I want right now. Yep. And then I just tr- do my best to f- focus on whatever is exciting me and then really feel into, is that actually my highest excitement? Do I want to go mm-hmm. that way? It's a, so I feel like it's also a moment of clarity too on checking in. Yeah. Because I can see the possible timelines as they play out. And then sometimes it means that I don't have to do them. I can mm-hmm. just like, oh, yeah. okay. Been <laughs> there, done that. Don't need to go down that path. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I do, uh, the one that keeps coming back to me is just, the community is not just it is everything for me it's mm-hmm. building a community and being deeply rooted in it and then having that vibration of connection mm-hmm. just go out because i feel that that's when i was looking at like my value sets <laughs> my friend rosanna was giving me this thing last week about have your th- top three to five core values of mm-hmm. your life match up with someone you're interested in mm-hmm. So I got really serious on asking myself, what are my core values? And for me, it was joy, abundance, connection, and then, you know, like love and growth and community, all these things. But Mm -hmm. the main three were joy, abundance, connection. And I was really, I was reflecting like, wow, this is really how I live. I've lived my life since, especially since being on Copenhagen, like, yeah just fully following all those things. And every time I did that, this is something Heather said yesterday was like, Brittany, whenever you're having fun, everything's just working. And Mm -hmm. I was realizing, (laughs) wow, that's actually really true. And do you feel that everyone, if they just followed their joy and their whatever made them feel good, do you think everything would just work out for them? Yeah, and I think that the key word there is connection. When you're connected, you know, it's the natural uh, outcome of that is is going to be joy and when you have a joy you have abundance so mm-hmm. it's you know it's, it, and that's the whole thing with now it's staying connected you mm-hmm. know it, when you're connected you're in the now um and so then that, everything else flows from that that's a really good question it leads me to a good question is when i was on this retreat in austria with a lot of amazing souls um some of them were asking me how do you you're saying connected. So my natural Mm -hmm. progression of that, okay, connected to what? And I was talking to some of them at this retreat about being connected to the source energy. And for me, that means, you know, we are all this one big energy bubble Mm -hmm. up, up there beyond the 3d, or maybe if we want to think interdimensionally inside of whatever, Mm -hmm. in the, (laughs) whatever, you know what I mean? (laughs) And there, we all have the opportunity to be connected directly to source energy. Some people choose to have, their timeline be that they are connected through source energy through their partner or through their, you know, their guru or God or whatever, whatever. But it's all the same. <laughs> it's the same end point always. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity is for us to be awake and then in our bodies enough to let the energy flow through us and get that direct line from source energy. Mm-hmm. But so many of these people were saying that they have never experienced that, that feeling of, connection to their own version of source energy Mm, i don't know i think i you know i i'm maybe on the optimistic side of things i think most people do experience it it's that it's that moment of wow is the way i would describe it when you're (laughs) fully connected it's like wow whatever you're doing whatever you're looking at whatever you're eating feeling you know it's it's a wow moment so have you ever had any wow moments, we've all had them. And so that's really what it's about. And even when I was traveling and I said, you know, I'm following the lights, I'm following those wow moments where it's like, you know, I get to that point, I'm like, wow. And then I kind of sense something in another direction. I go there and I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, and it's it's kind of a, it, you know, it's like a treasure hunt. And you're finding each of these little gems that make you go, 
wow. Mm-hmm. So that's that's just chase your wow, I guess. Uh, Do you think that's the point of life, just to keep having these moments of just clicking, you know, with the universe, where you're just constantly being in awe of how amazing everything is? If that's, I mean, you can choose to have that, and that's a, I, I kind of think that's a fun life to have, you know. <laughs> it's, but it's it's all choice. Every, you know, that's the beauty of it. It's all we have a hundred percent free choice and everything you know all outcomes are are run through all dimensions which dimension do we want to exist in this is why i always want you to watch this movie everything everywhere all at once because it's basically talking about all of that i guess you're already living it we're all living it well yeah pretty well i guess (laughs) (laughs) i was i was reading something somewhere and it was saying that consciousness wants to evolve no this was my dmt trip this is my (laughs) one of my downloads from my dmt trip was that consciousness wants to evolve and we get to choose whether it's through pain or pleasure. And so it's like, it's like consciousness doesn't look at it in the same, it looks at it in a very non-emotional way. So mm-hmm. it's just like, okay, let's run them through the this game. Mm. And then if they die, let's start over. Da, da, da. Like it's just like throwing things at us and we get to choose by keep like following our highest excitement and being positive and looking for the wow, looking for the joy whether or not we're going to follow through with the pleasure because it's going to give us those signposts along the way. And I was like, okay, I'm choosing to have more of the joy ones in my life. Like I'm going to follow. I keep looking. The river's flowing. I mean, you're either, (laughs) you know, going to get beat up by the rocks or you're following this cool path that just, wow, that feels so nice. (laughs) So it's, again, choice. Yeah. And I feel for some people, they're going to ask, okay, well, how do I get in that flow? And one thing that really helped me was to start journaling every day about what I was grateful for. And and then even if some of my friends think it's cheesy, whenever I remember to, when I'm eating, I always ask everyone, what are you grateful for today? And mm-hmm. just have a little moment where everyone's sharing about it. And I can literally see and feel very viscerally the vibration changing after we all say what we're grateful for. Cause we're, and then you, you hit this yep. wow moment. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, living in gratitude is is a is a huge hack if you like. Mm-hmm. I mean, just thank you, thank you. You know, everything. Just feeling grateful and and finding what you're grateful for, and and just living life to be grateful. You know, we went out for this an amazing lunch mm-hmm. today. You know, we just found this place that we'd been there once before. Didn't realize it. Fantastic food. I'm very grateful. You mm-hmm. know? And so you just. You know, it's if you if you're focused on the positives, then gratitude comes naturally, and it just keeps building. Mm-hmm. If you focus on what's missing, the lack, the faults, all of that, then well, guess what? You keep going down that path. Yeah, whatever <laughs> you, we, you focus on, whatever expands. you focus on. You know, it's like when you're riding a bike. If you focus on the thing you want to avoid, guess what? Boom, you're gonna hit it. <laughs> um, so focus on what you want. This is also why I I always say our words are spells and. Mm-hmm. When people are saying, I don't want this, I'm like, okay, what, just say it out loud what you <laughs> actually want because the universe doesn't know the difference. It just keeps hearing the thing you keep yeah. talking about. Yeah. So focus on, I would love more of this or this would be amazing, da, da, da. And then the thing that I was really listening to, I was telling you earlier, was this morning I was listening to one of um, a podcast um, by what, the one that Faraday always listens to. <laughs> no, I can't know it. No, no, he's going to laugh at me. Problem. Uh, Bashar, Bashar, yes. Bashar mm-hmm. thing. And it was about um, once you to, you know, envision what you want and then let it go. Let go of the expectation mm-hmm. of how it comes out in the 3D. Yeah. And that's one thing I'm really embodying more and more is just getting myself to the point of excitement and then following that excitement and mm-hmm. then constantly kind of letting it go how it keeps coming and asking myself how could this be even better and what it, and whatever comes along ask myself why is this happening for me mm-hmm. like <laughs> even with the pcr test to go back home uh, yeah. i was uh, getting nervous about it and i was like oh i don't i don't really want to take a pcr test because yeah and then we looked it up right today or when we were about to go to the doctor's mm-hmm. office and they're like oh as like as of october 1st and I, I just kept saying how is this happening for me how's and then ended up, it didn't even need to happen so yeah. it was great yeah yeah a lot of times i i see we we have this very clear vision of what we want and we we need to really put out the essence the essence of what we want and then you know, however it's packaged, wherever that is, whenever that happens, you know, that that's up to the universe. And the universe mm-hmm. honestly loves us and will give us everything we need in our best, you know, interest at 
the right time and, and place, but we have to kind of let go of our definition of how that needs to to look uh, in a way. And and Heather, you know, case in point, I put out, you know, I want uh, to uh, connect with my soulmate and have a life together. And these are things that are important. And, you know, I had my own ideas of, you know, like all of us, yeah, she's going to look like this and da, 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 da. And yeah, the, Heather is not, if I saw a picture of Heather on Tinder, I, I wouldn't have clicked in the right direction, let's just say. And, and so we get trapped in our, our kind of expectations of, of these outer things. And we need I just to, need to put out Heather is things. beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. yeah Heather, in. we love you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's and just, you guys have been together happily for 10 years now. Yeah. Yep. 10 and a half. That's yeah. amazing. I love you guys. Yeah. But again, when you have this idea, these very rigid, you know, it's, it's, you know, let's talk about what we want. So how, yeah. so people should just, what, when you say the essence, what's, what's really important, you know, how do you want to feel that this is yes. Okay. So, cause I, people always tell me, Brittany, you're so good at manifesting where you live. Mm -hmm. And it's because I sit down and I intentionally do a manifesting session in my journal mm -hmm. and I write out exactly the type of kind of parameters I'm asking the universe for. Yeah. But then I go into what am I going to use it for? How, how am I going to use this part of the room or how do I want to feel? I would yeah. love to have a balcony overlooking the sea so that I can feel the breeze and it feels open and airy and spacious and creative. And what do I want to do there? And then and then the universe is like, here you go. You have a yeah. very specific set and this is kind of what you need from there and this is what you get. And I'm like, thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it sounds like you've done that with almost your whole life. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I <laughs> again, I, I, I got diverted out no, of No, I mean flow, the, but what you, the life you have now. Your oh, the, whole life this life? Now. Absolutely. Yeah, this, absolutely. this timeline. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, we just kind of went around until we, f we had the right feel. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like, yep, this feels right. I had a very clear idea of how it should feel and, and how we should feel in that, you know, place. And, and you know, uh, then wherever that place was, and, and we went to a lot of places like you. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I think you knew kind of what you wanted, how you wanted to feel just that connection. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, we met in Chiang Mai. I don't think you were even aware of Kopangan at that point you were jumping all over the place mm -hmm. suddenly you got there I went to over 50 countries and the place that was home was right under my nose yep yeah as yeah. it goes yeah and yeah but it and was fun to seek it was fun to look everywhere and, yeah. then, and then when I found what I wanted I was like yes this is an informed decision yeah <laughs> yeah it's good to have that sense of home and then but still to travel out because then you go back home and you appreciate it even yeah, more. Yeah, so I've, I'll be out for six weeks before I go back to Copenhagen. And I am so grateful for the contrast because one of the major things that I realized being on the island for almost two and a half years straight was on the island, people are way more energetically open and like wanting to share that energy. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of this baseline of like, we are a tribe together. And I learned, I did a lot of different workshops when I was there. And one of the things I was telling you about on our mushroom trip was this, this thing that I feel like the whole island embodies of the nervous system about how we need co-regulation. So the, the term co-regulation comes from when you're a baby, you cannot regulate your own nervous system. Like self-regulation is like when I'm upset, I can mm -hmm. calm myself down. Co-regulation is from zero to at least six months, a baby cannot self-regulate. So when they get upset, they literally don't know how to calm down. And so the parent puts them on their chest and the baby matches the heartbeat of the parent. But as, and as adults, we still need this type of co-regulation, which is like, I'm here, oh, yeah. I'm here, we're in this yeah. together. No, and we're all sensitive beings. We pick up on everything. Yeah. yeah. And on the island, I just feel like people are so much more down to hug each other and touch and even just hold hands like guys, girls, doesn't matter. It's, it's not a sexual. And I feel mm -hmm. like in society, it's been programmed to be in this box of sexuality. If like, if we touch, it means something sexual. Mm -hmm. And I feel like on the island, it's one safe enough in my group, you know, I can't speak for everything on the island, but in my group of friends, it's very safe. And everyone has this kind of understanding that we can be, have this, I call it caring touch with each mm -hmm. other. It's just like, I'm here, whatever you need, I'm here to listen. And I, I always say like, you know, just come as you are, like however you are is good enough and we accept you. 
And I feel that that is so good for our nervous systems. Like mm-hmm. Absolutely. That is what I feel like is home is when you can really just. Where you feel safe. <sighs> yeah. Take safe. a deep breath, yeah. safe, everything. And then I feel like from there you can build everything. No. Yeah. Because they say after our survival needs, the, the basic human needs that we have are connect, connection and creative expression. And I feel that for most people in the big world out here, they spend their whole lives get, still getting their survival needs secured. And then... Well, once you have yeah. connection, I mean, people are connected in, in war zones and mm-hmm. they still feel safer than people who are not connected in the safest places in the world. So it's connection is, is key. You need to feel connected to others and be part of, we're, 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 you know, we're animals that need to be, you know, in a pack and a tribe. Mm -hmm. We need to find where that tribe is, where we connect. It's crucial. Yeah. This is why I keep saying that what we're building on the Island is emerging tech with tribalism because Mm -hmm. we are thinking futuristic and using technology in a way that is sustainable and connecting us as a tribe. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is so exciting. (laughs) (laughs) There's like so much to do, so many things to build. So why are you doing all of this? Because this is a lot of work. This is, you know, there's, you, your life is set up. You've got this beautiful, I mean, your spot where you live is just gorgeous. You've got this sweet doggy. Oh, you've got all. friends. You've got everything set. Why do you want to take on all of these extra kind of challenges and goals and all of this stuff? Because it's so exciting. I mean, ever since I was born, I've always known I was meant to do something really big in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, I have an ego I need to do. It's like, no, I just want to make beautiful things and Mm -hmm. connect. And for me, connection has always been my thing if if people are into human design I, yeah. my thing is i have the cross of alignment like i love aligning things and seeing the energy flow through them and yeah. connecting people and creating this tribal unit and it's just something that's so in me if anything it, it's i feel like an alien in the world most of the time because mm. i am so that i am embodying that connection and tribalism and when people when i am in you know the outside world i and people are, are not like that. I, I don't know how to interact. I feel like mm-hmm. an alien. So it's the most at home I feel. I guess basically yeah. I'm just building the community that I want to be in. Yeah. Well, and it, it, it's something that obviously a lot of others want as well because they're already there. They're already resonating and others are coming. And Yeah, it's just it's so much more fun when we do it together, you know. Yeah. And then I think like if we can create this bubble of reality of just complete joy and I call it grounded joy. It's like, you know, we are awake. We understand Mm -hmm. what's going on in the world. It is falling apart out there and we can have that timeline be the end all be all and freak out. Or we can say, okay, I choose to create a different timeline that is for me better and feels better. And I feel safe having my kids into, and we have to do our best. And if we keep following whatever feels good, I know that the universe is guiding us in whatever direction we need to go. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like the world's falling apart. I feel like it's coming together. I guess it's, you know, it's just. Yeah. I mean, Jasmine things. always tells it's, me that I need to be more positive in that way. It's just, it's just my, <laughs> it's nothing <laughs> logical. And I can say you know, whatever, um, whatever. It's just a feeling that I have. And yeah. you, we were talking about this earlier. Like I had this feeling, I didn't know that COVID was coming, but yeah. there was, you saw me, I was yeah. r- literally running from country to continent all yeah. over the place at a, a speed that p- normal humans probably should not go. And I just had this feeling that I need to go travel. I want to see the world and things are going to change soon. I don't know how or why I just need to go see them. And this is the same feeling I have. It's like mm-hmm. coming out here this summer, I just had this feeling like, and whether it's just my excitement to go back and build things on Copenhagen, but I was just yeah. like, I'm going to go have my playtime and then I'm going to be on the island for a while. And I, for a while for me, it means till next summer. Like mm-hmm. I would love to, I'm love to come out and be in Berlin and come see you guys in Amsterdam and so many, and <laughs> go to all these fun things. There's lots of fun things happening <laughs> next summer. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Do you think I should change that? Do I don't, I don't want, I don't, I don't need the things in the world to fall apart for my thing to work. It's just, I just have this kind of, I feel this pressure that it's like, I want to, I would love to do this soon. Right. So what I would say is, 
we're either creating from fear or creating from joy. And if if you're doing this to kind of create this bubble because of all these problems in the world, that's creating from a fear standpoint. If you're creating this because it's going to be so much fun and really great to connect with people and we're going to do all these great things like permaculture and energy work and just have a huge party and fun that's creating from joy so you know everything else is noise if you like and just focus on the joy focus on creating that joy um i think that's really good i'm gonna think i'm gonna ponder that more (laughs) um I do know that when I'm on the island, I'm my most joyful. Mm -hmm. And so I even cut my Europe trip short a whole week because I was just so excited (laughs) to go back. I've been wanting to leave the island all, not leave, I would wanting to visit Europe all summer. Finally, and I made it out here and then (laughs) then I'm just like, I want to go home. Uh, I'm so excited. But that's a good thing. Yeah. it's, It's good to want to go someplace you're not it's not that you're trying to get away from here it's like i i I have such a great life there that i am looking forward to getting back this is going to be so much fun and this is someone who loves to travel so much and do all the things yeah and i even had i put it on my facebook like where should i go and had all these people commenting like come visit me here come visit me there and i just meditated on it and i asked my inner child and it was like i want to go home (laughs) and then i almost started crying because i was just so (laughs) excited and I'm really grateful that I have a place that feels like that. I feel, I was joking this morning that I feel like everywhere on the island is kind of my living room because like all the Thai mamas are, they yeah. all love me and they're always making things for me and helping me out in different ways. And I know everyone when I go into the coffee shop and Afro's, my dog uh, comes with me everywhere mm. and she's just so cute. Um, yeah, I, I feel, I feel really grateful and I'm excited for you to come out and see everything. Yeah. It'll Are you excited? Oh, totally. Totally. I've <laughs> wanted to do this for a while. I'm just like, okay, what's the right moment? Waiting for that <laughs> flow state so I can get there. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Is there anything else that you think that we should share with people? <sighs> That's already a lot. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could do this all day. This is basically how we talk all day long. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. And sometimes we throw in some business stuff, some spiritual stuff, some party stuff. It's all my favorite things all in yeah. one. Well, if I can help folks, you know, feel free to reach out. You yeah, know. Richard's amazing. I think when you're on the island for more longer sets of time, maybe we can set up some fun events and mm-hmm. get you involved in the community more. He's such a good business mentor and just an amazingly encouraging human. And I'm, yeah, I just love you. On my good days. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You're like the most joyful person. I have been here a whole week. I have seen all of it. Okay. Uh, so this is Brittany Bond and Richard, my godfather. Thank mm-hmm. you so much for being on the show. Thank you. And love you so much. Thank you, you for coming and visiting us. You yeah. make us very happy. It's <laughs> so fun to be here. I've been eating so much. <laughs> oh, you guys, he's the best cook ever on top of everything else. Like, oh, I get so excited to eat all your food. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yesterday I was like, what would it take to live in a reality where I get to eat your food every day? (laughs) Hint, hint. (laughs) So if you're lucky, you'll get to taste some of his food when he comes to Copenhagen. Okay, signing off. Have a beautiful day. And yeah, follow your joy, you guys. We're here for you. Bye.